Most of the Homestuck fandom will tell you that Gamzee Makara is a broken character, and with good reason. The author of the story tells us his actions probably don't make any sense, and a lot of the fandom has decided to take that literally, believing that Andrew Hussey didn't know what he was doing when writing this character, or, more likely, was just trolling us. The end result is a character that, for most, is deeply unpleasant to think about for all sorts of reasons. He commits all kinds of acts of depraved and distasteful immorality, but we're also told barely anything about who he is, how he does what he does, or why he even does it. But I think there's a coherent strain of thought behind Gamzee's character, and while I consider Gamzee responsible for everything he did, I think there's a case to be made that his worldview made him uniquely malleable and exploitable by Lord English. You probably won't believe me about this, but then that'll be kind of the point. Introductions complete, let's begin our descent. The extended Zodiac tells us that the Ragebound care about the truth more than anything. They aren't so much spiritual or religious as they are deeply dogmatic and intense about their beliefs. In essence, they think like conspiracy theorists. Understanding this is vital, because at the core of Gamzee's narrative is a schism between two major versions of his character, separated by an intense crisis of faith. Gamzee is a bard, the passive destroyer class. This means we can understand him as one who allows rage to be destroyed, or invites destruction through rage. Rage rules over concepts like anger, fear, hate, doubt, and confusion, and Gamzee will often be found exerting his influence through these concepts, sometimes in multiple ways at the same time. Early Gamzee is little more than a 420 joke. He's depicted as a harmless stoner juggalo who simply wants to make his friends happy. He worships his personal vision of the mirthful messiahs, an obscure religious cult made up of purple-blooded trolls like Gamzee, the highest blood color of Alternia's hemospectrum belonging to land-dwelling trolls. His high blood privilege allows him a sheltered upbringing and the freedom to indulge his soporific drug habit, and as a result he seems completely out of touch with the true nature of his religious order. Alternia's Grand Highbloods are a powerful cult devoted to the worship of Lord English, a physical god who exists on Alternia and tortures troll kind throughout its history through a number of agents. The Highbloods are one of these agents, religious enforcers who control the population through a combination of brutal executions and psychic shuckle voodoos that poison Lowblood's minds with nightmares of gore and violence, fear, anger, and paranoia. Gamzee's crisis of faith comes about when Dave Strider exposes him to the real-world inspiration for his religion, the Juggalo subculture formed around the insane clown posse. When Gamzee learns about this, he regards it as heretical and a desecration of everything he believes in. Soon after this, he comes into contact with two messengers of his god, Lord English. The first is Lel Cal, a doll containing Lord English's composite, twisted soul. Gamzee looks into Lil Cal's eyes, and in the depths of those peepers, he discovers a horrifying, unavoidable truth. Just as Caliborn does later, Gamzee recognizes one of the souls that makes up Lord English as his own. Meaning Gamzee's soul is, in effect, partly responsible for starting his own religion. Gamzee's initially distraught and confused by this knowledge, but he soon begins to trust Lil' Cal and the souls within, and decides to reframe his worldview according to what it tells him. Lil' Cal can be highly suggestive to those who hold it. Gamzee and Bro both begin picking up phrases and habits that seem to originate from Cal once they possess it. And because Bro is a highly active class and Gamzee a highly passive one, we have some reason to believe Gamzee is more susceptible to psychic suggestion. But the relationship doesn't seem to be mind control, as Lil' Cal proves capable of later. Rather, Gamzee implies he welcomes Lil' Cal like a best friend, specifically as a replacement for Tavros, who Gamzee regarded romantically. The purple sign cast description suggests Gamzee's a strictly monogamous and devoted lover, which he proves as he devotes himself fully to the service of Lil' Cal and the boy who will eventually become Lord English, Caliborn. So we can see Tavros's death as the moment Gamzee's relationship to the rest of his friends is severed and he devotes himself fully to the new object of his affections. And why? because Lil' Cal gives him the truth. At this moment, Gamzee simultaneously receives three divine revelations. 
He discovers that his cult god exists in physical form, he discovers the cruel and brutal nature of this god, and he discovers that he himself is this god, or part of it. The important thing is that Gamzee does not choose to believe these things. He's confronted with unavoidable proof for all of them. He's confronted with a physical, tangible truth. Now forced to accept this truth, Gamzee embraces the violent and vicious roots of the cult, becoming a dark messiah ruthlessly devoted to bringing about the advent of his god. He taps into his ancestral memory of the Grand High Blood and begins imitating the High Bloods by murdering his lower blooded friends. Starting with Equius, one of the other characters whose souls will become part of Lord English. After that, Gamzee targets female characters that Caliborn later goes on to single out for death in his retelling of Homestuck. He starts by killing dear, sweet, precious, dear Nepeta before our eyes while Caliborn describes her as useless and irrelevant. The monsters. Briska is targeted for her ambition and attempts at relevance, but rather than confront her directly, Gamzee drags Terezi Pyrope into the conflict. By manipulating Terezi to play up her anger and frustration with Vriska, he encourages her to take on the neophyte Red Glare persona she used to roleplay during FLARP campaigns she and Vriska waged together, partnered as the Scourge Sisters. Using the memories of lies, betrayal, and mutual revenge from that period to anger Terezi into killing Vriska once and for all. Caliborn kills Terezi off for getting between his one true pairing of Dave and Karkat, and though he doesn't kill her immediately, Gamzee makes sure she suffers for this. After Terezi kills Vriska, Gamzee and Terezi enter a kismesitude and he starts harassing and emotionally abusing her, wearing down her self-respect and ability to focus and help her friends for the rest of the adventure. Kurlos Makara also has an affinity for kismesitude and hate-based relationships, and Gamzee's able to use his relationship with Terezi to wear down her resolve and deliver a beating that eventually leads to her bleeding to death. He also uses his cast-given shuckle voodoos to mess with the beta kids' minds during their childhoods, rendering them all somewhat mentally unstable. He pays special attention to John, poisoning his mind with the clown doll that acts as the source of John's self-loathing messages and clown scrawlings, which indirectly contributes to Jack Knorr's rage-fueled rise to power and destruction of the Beta Kid session. But perhaps because Bart is one of the most passive classes, pushing himself into behaving so actively seems exhausting and stressful for Gamzee. So while his behavior during the horror stuck sequence is impactful, it's also unsustainable, and he soon settles down with some help from Karkat. He's then contacted by Doc Scratch, Lord English's second emissary. Scratch is Ellie's best bureaucrat, salesperson, and master manipulator. He's also a part of Lord English himself, a puppet that Ellie uses to carry out tasks he doesn't want to perform personally. It's Doc Scratch who manipulates trolls into being as violent and cruel as they are across their entire planet's history. And since Scratch's soul includes Dirk Cyber Omniscient AI Autoresponder, Equius, and Gamzee himself, Scratch is also aware of all the events to come in the second half of Homestuck. In Cascade, Gamzee talks to Scratch, and by reporting the completion of Horror Sucks events, implies he was doing everything he did on the orders of Scratch, Lil Cal, or both. Then he asks what's next. So Scratch is in a position to offer Gamzee something unique. A script. Through Scratch, Gamzee could have learned everything he needed to do over the course of the Alpha Kid session in order to bring about the birth of L.E. This is likely why Gamzee complains about Vriska in the post-Redcon timeline. There's a plan in place that the Cult of the Mirthful Messiahs is following, and Vriska shooting her way back into being alive throws that plan off the rails. But in learning his role, Gamzee would also learn something else. A deep truth of Homestuck's universe that would reshape the way he sees the world and the way we see rage. He would learn that Homestuck isn't real. This video exists thanks to the support of my wise cohort of patrons. If you'd like to summon more videos like this onto your screen, then you can join them. Also make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss another video. That's all for now. Until next time, keep rising.